The Blue Jays always seem to struggle to bring in free agent talent. They just have historically struggled with trying to get players to come play for them in Toronto, in Canada. Well, now they've paid their premium. They got their guy in George Springer. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you've liked the content so far, go ahead and leave a like on this video and subscribe down below. Turn post notifications on so you all are always updated on the latest off-season news. Today we're talking, or tonight I should say, I'm uploading this same day. Tonight we're talking about the Blue Jays. They've had a lot of, of activity recently. They've gotten George Springer, Kirby Yates. They've signed Tyler Chatwood as well off the free agent market. They've done really well for themselves so far this offseason. Normally there's really no uh, you know big name free agents ever going to Toronto any offseason really at all. There's hardly ever any news surrounding the Blue Jays team. But this offseason they've executed. They have. They've executed. They've set out and had a plan and they're ready to compete. They, I really, truly believe that. Now, there were earlier reports today that the Blue Jays were also getting outfielder slash DH hitter Michael Brantley. False reporting on my on my Instagram feed and my Twitter feed of you know retweeting that uh, retweeting some of those premature reports that Michael Brantley was going to the Blue Jays when indeed that was not the case and now I can confirm Michael Brantley is going back to the Astros on a two year thirty two million dollar deal so wanted to get that out of the way so what you're looking at now is the projected lineup for the 2021 season for the toronto blue jays just want to let you guys know that i'm getting this line up from roto champ i always use them for like projected lineups they're really good and they're almost they're always up to date like even i mean you know newly acquired george springer he's on here so this is what they're uh, projecting the lineup will be. It'll be Springer, Biggio, Bichette, Hernandez, Guerrero Jr., Guriel Jr., Grichik, Telez, and Danny Jansen. As I've kind of looked over this, and I think MLB.com has this lineup a little bit different, but the names are pretty consistent. Um, I believe they, I, I think MLB.com has Guerrero Jr. at first base and then Telez batting DH, I believe. So I kind of want to shift focus now because of the whole Michael Brantley situation. I'm glad that the Blue Jays actually didn't end up getting Michael Brantley. Because if you look down at their starters, you know, they have Ryu, they have Ray, Stripling, Pearson, and Roark. And they also just recently signed Tyler Chatwood. But uh, all indications point that Tyler Chatwood would be a relief pitcher out of the bullpen. And, you know, if you look at this, Nate Pearson didn't pitch really at all last season. And Ryu, I believe he's like coming off an injury. He hasn't really been on the field consistently. You know, they're really struggling with their with their pitching staff, especially the starting pitching. You know, this this starting rotation that I'm looking at and I'll zoom in I'll zoom in uh, on it, you know, for you guys. It's it's struggling. You know, Ross Stripling, he's, you know, he was coming out of the bullpen for his previous clubs. And Robbie Ray, uh, you know, I'm I'm a Diamondbacks fan, a Diamondbacks and Royals fan, and I can tell you Robbie Ray is not. He has had some rough seasons these last few seasons. So, you know, th there's there's some guys in here that could have a good year, don't get me wrong, but they're kind of middle of the road starters. They're not, you know, they're not one and two guys. These guys are four and five four or five starters you know what i mean uh with the exception of nate pearson because he's pretty young um i do think nate pearson has a potential to be a one-two guy he's not there yet the blue jays now have george springer isn't on here but they you know they have grichik they have lourdes guriel jr then they have teoscar hernandez then you add in george springer so that basically means they have four starting outfielders now. And, of course, we know George Springer's playing center field. They just gave the guy $150 million over six years. Which, by the way, I did... <laughs> I would really appreciate it if you check out my George Springer video. I'll put it right up here for you guys. I did um, you know, predict that George Springer was going to the Blue Jays in that video. So if you don't believe me, go check it out. Um, you know, I'll leave a link to it right here. The Blue Jays aren't done. Let me just say this. The Blue Jays are not done because as we're looking at this, you know, even the infielders, 
You've got Bichette, Biggio, Guerrero Jr., and Telez. You know, Guerrero Jr., he, he apparently he's dropped like 40 pounds this offseason, like 30, 40 pounds, and they've probably been updating his, his weight now because I think like last season he was at like 280 or something. Now they say he's down at 250, obviously. They'll have a better estimate of that number once he reports to spring training and weighs in and all that. But, uh, you know, does Guerrero Jr. play third base? That's the huge question that's looming right now because you have four outfielders and where do you maneuver those guys? Because if Guerrero Jr. plays third, then you have Telez at first base and then that frees up the designated hitter position. So then maybe you, you can move one of those, those four outfielders. You can shift one of them to the DH. But if Guerrero Jr. is shifted to first base, then they go, you know, move somebody to third base, and then Telez is, is, is clogging up the DH spot. Then you have a situation where the Blue Jays are definitely going to have to, you know, make a trade at that point because there's just no room on the roster. Bottom line, the Blue Jays, there's no way that they're done. There's no way they're either going to have another trade or they're going to sign another pitcher. Something's going to have to happen. You know, look, looking at today, if I am the Blue Jays after, you know, the whole situation with Michael Brantley kind of fell, you know, just collapse in on itself, maybe that is just a statement, you know. Yes, it would have been nice, and it sounded like if they were going to get Michael Brantley on that three-year deal that, that was reported, it sounded like they were going to use him as a designated hitter, which, yeah, that would have been nice, sure. But maybe there's, maybe, you know, the, the baseball gods are telling you, you don't need Michael Brantley. What you need to focus on is your pitching. And I think that's what's really been holding back these Toronto Blue Jays, because, you know, they have all these great young batters. I mean, they have Biggio, they have Guerrero Jr., you know, they have uh, Guriel, you know, they have all these young um, you know, Bichette, I think I already mentioned Biggio, but Bichette too. I mean, they, all these young players, that's half your lineup right there. Let them mature, you know, let them step into their roles. There's no doubt in my mind that the Blue Jays in these coming years are going to be their most powerful and their most potent if they hold on to these young guys. They need to hold on to these guys because yes, there's growing pains and yes, they're still young, but they'll get there. They will. They're going to get there. And once they do, this lineup is going to be impossible to pitch to. I mean, it is going to be impossible. One through nine is going to be so potent. It's going to be unreal. So, um, you know, I hold, I would, if I'm them, I hold on to these young guys. But, you know, let me know down in the comments below. Do you guys think that the Blue Jays win the AL East this year? Do you think if they go out, they get the pitching help, you know, they obviously they need a few more guys. I don't I right now as they said, I don't even think they're winning the AL East. But if they go out and get a few more guys this offseason, you know, they get a a few a few more pitchers, they get some some bullpen help as well as maybe sign one, maybe even two, you know, starting pitchers, move some guys around, get some trades in there. Do you think the Blue Jays win the AL East um in 2021? Let me know down in the comments below. So another thing I just want to add into the video, guys, I'm going to leave, this will be the top link in the description below. Uh, the link is going to take you guys to an MLB.com article by MLB.com's Keegan Matheson, and I'll go ahead and leave a link to his Twitter uh, right below. Those will be the top two links. The first one will be to this article. The second one will be to his Twitter. Um, and as you check out the article, I want you guys to check out the video in the article because they interview on MLB Hot MLB Network Hot Stove. If you're familiar with that, a segment on MLB Network, they're interviewing uh, Toronto Blue Jays broadcaster Dan Schulman, and he is mentioning what he thinks the Blue Jays are going to do. And certainly, he has you know he has insider information. Absolutely, that broadcaster does, and he's you know he's covering this team year round, so he is going to have inside information. And he leaves, you know, his ideas in there and he tells his ideas for what he thinks the Blue Jays are going to do this offseason because he doesn't think that they're done either, uh, just as I don't. And so I would definitely recommend go check out that video interview.
With that, I'm going to go ahead and leave the video here. We'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, that will probably likely be an NBA 2K21 uh, gameplay, but I'm trying to figure that out because James Harden just got signed to the Nets, and I kind of want to include that in my season, so I might see if I can get James Harden to the Nets somehow. But, you know, until that video comes out, we'll see y'all uh, we'll then. Tabor time out. Peace.